What's up, guys? Mindless again. Wanted to share another piece. And uh, anytime you can get a Rexford, uh, you got to make a video. So wanted to share my most recent Rexford acquisition. What you're looking at today is the Gamma model from Todd Rexford. And uh, I've been looking for one of these for a minute. So, you know, obviously, or not obviously, but over the years, the most... Uh, popular model or the most hyped up model or like singularity or uh, injection and in the past couple of years he's come out with some more um, models like uh, cesium entropy and the gamma and a gamma those other the last three that i just mentioned are, are pretty difficult to get you can find singularities on the market and uh, injections tad triple op designed it an injection collaboration so they're out there, but gammas, uh, entropies, and cesiums, and specifically entropies and cesiums, are exceedingly rare. And a few weeks back, there is a little knife show that not too many people attend or even know about. It's in Solvang, California, the Solvang Knife Show, Custom Knife Show. And uh, Todd Rexford announced uh, a month or two back, quietly, that he'd be bringing some pieces to that show. That show mainly deals with art knives, so you don't really see too many of the tactical makers. However, at this show, I think uh, Bob Terzola was there, a couple heavy hitters were there, including Todd Rexford. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. It's only about two hours uh, from where I live, but I just could not get out there because of family obligations. So, I um, spoke with uh, Sako over at Recon One and told him, hey, I'm looking for a Rexford. And if there's any way that um, we can get on the lotteries or open bid, I'd love it if he could represent me uh, bidding. So he was uh, keeping me updated on a no-name piece, like a one-off piece that Todd made that he was he put out for open bid, and um, I uh, the price went way too high, and it ended up going to a person that I know. So congratulations, but I just didn't think it was worth that much to me. I'm not saying the knife wasn't worth that much, but just to me. So I get a call a couple hours after the show ends, and it looks like Sako and his crew over at Recon 1 were um, wheeling and dealing like they do, and this piece, the winner of this piece, this was a lottery piece, um, wanted to offload it to a dealer, and Sako immediately contacted me, and I jumped on it immediately. This was actually the piece, believe it or not, even though it was a lottery piece, it was more complex and dressy than even the entropy, or rather the uh, open bid piece, forgive me. So I knew I, I had it. This is a brand new build. Uh, I think this was built about two months ago. And uh, let's talk about the knife a little bit. That's the story of how I, I, it came into my collection. So we, what you're looking at here, we'll start with the blade, is a Sanmai uh, Damascus blade that is just gorgeous. I mean, Todd Rexford has a very detail-oriented eye, and you can see that clearly on the pattern. If you look at it, the way it's patterned, it's almost symmetrical on both sides, which is very difficult to do, and he executed it perfectly. It's uh, The etching is great. It's a very dark color. There's no fading or gray or ghosting. It's just perfect. And he also... Um, made the pivot with that same Damascus as well as the backspacer on this. So there's a floating backspacer. You can see the uh, side profile of the Damascus. Beautiful. On the other side, the pivot is also custom. You need a custom tool to tighten it, but in uh, typical Rexer fashion, you don't really need to touch these knives. They're, they're perfectly tuned, and this one is no exception. It's a flipper, and it's a big knife. I, I don't have my measuring tape here, so forgive me, but... I'd say the blade is probably in the range of four inches. Um, and the most uh, dramatic piece of this, of this build is the hot hammered finish that he puts on the titanium. And Todd does it unlike anybody else. Um, and no one else really does it because it's kind of his signature technique, which is kind of shrouded in mystery. Nobody knows exactly how it's done, but there's no doubt that nobody does it quite like him. Um, I worked with the lighting pretty hard this morning trying to get it so that you could see the reflections and see the colors that reflect. If, you get, if you've ever handled or seen a hot hammer in real life, you'll know immediately that it does not look anything like photos or video. 
and I think I got close. You can kind of see like rainbow coloration. So you'll see green, blue, purple, red as it reflects light. And it looks ridiculous. And I know it's not for everybody. Some people I've heard it compared to like burnt skin and stuff like that. But over time, this finish has grown to me, grown on me. And I think it's because I know how difficult it is to do the amount of time that goes into to just sitting there and hammering this, the titanium to get it to look like this is extraordinary. And again, no one does it like Todd. The, the pocket clip matches as well, so it kind of blends in when um, it's out of your pocket, but when it's in your pocket and that's what you see, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So what you're looking at again, this is the Gamma model from the Solving Knife Show. And uh, I'm stoked to have it, guys. This thing is freaking awesome. It is a flipper. Um, recently, I've been kind of getting into like flicking a lot. So I'm not getting flippers. I'm just getting folders. But I think this knife is perfect as a flipper. If you take a look at the grind, it's a very straightforward hollow ground blade. Wickedly sharp. Perfectly symmetrical. Just perfectly done. Even the sharpening, the bevel is exactly the same on both sides. I mean, this is what makes Todd's knives so uh, attractive and expensive. You know, a lot of people, I think, kind of scoff at uh, secondary market pricing for, you know, these high-end pieces. And Rexford, Barker, those kind of guys, uh, Marsh, their pieces demand huge dollars. And you know, as a young collector, when I first started out, I just would say, oh, there's never, I would never pay that much. Impossible. I would never do it. But as your tastes evolve and your experience level in, in the knife collecting game kind of grows, you become, you begin to see the value in these higher end pieces. And to me, this is a perfect knife. Action is absolutely perfect. It is a push button style. So you just kind of press straight down. Boom, fires every time. You will not misfire on this because it is a push button. Just perfect. I mean, unbelievable. The action is unbelievable. The sound, perfect. Lock up on this. It is a frame lock. It is relatively early. I'd say 20%. Super solid. Just perfect. Take a look at the centering on this thing dead on typical Rexford and the tolerances are paper thin. It's running on bearings. Um, you could see uh, Todd uh, like dremeled his name into it. He'll either do that or he'll put the blade type, but this is Damascus, so it's, a, it's irrelevant. Um, it's a floating backspacer, so you can kind of see the light behind it. And it is just gorgeous. The cool thing about these uh, hot hammer pieces is, because um, I do have another one, and I had a few come through the collection, actually. I've done videos. I think I did a video on my Singularity, if you look back. Um, but the great thing about the hot hammer finish is that it does not show wear. It does not. I have carried it. Um, I carried my other knife. And I, I know a lot of people won't believe that I actually carry a Rexford. But again, like I say in all the videos, my, my lifestyle is not a hard use. I don't use knives. Um, I don't abuse my knives. It's basically an open envelopes, cut some food, yada, yada, yada. It's not doing any heavy cutting. I'm not cutting twine or giant rope or batoning in any way. It is a gentleman's carry. I use it in my office. So um, it, it's, just, it's just a beauty. Uh, to me... The Sanmai with the hot hammered looks amazing. Um, would it look better with a satin blade? Maybe. Personally, I kind of tend to go towards Damascus and Damasteel and stuff like that. And if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, um, you know that I like the dressier pieces. And this just fits the bill perfectly. And um, we could spend hours literally talking about you know the minutia, the details of of Todd's work and, and that's what really what separates him from the rest. I mean, a perfect example is the tolerances of the hardware. Take a look at the stop pin and the screws on the back. They're all countersunk. You don't feel them and evenly spaced, perfectly spaced around the screw head it is just unbelievable. The level of um, perfection that he strives for. 
even the seemingly un, you know, seemingly random pattern in the uh, hot hammer finish, it doesn't just happen like that. You guys have to, you know, he has to pound away, get these facets, look at it, see if it's too frequent in one area or another, because if there were too many bumps on this side versus this side, you would notice it. To get it even, it's difficult. And then add to that, even on both sides, it's even more difficult. So, you know, Todd spends hundreds of hours on each piece and um, it shows without a doubt. If you hold the knife in your hand, you will know how much work went into it and compare it to other makers. And I'm not saying other makers don't have the skill set, but they may not put as much time into each piece as Todd does. And um, anytime you can get your hand on a Rexford piece, you know your investment's safe and you know you have a piece that is unique and um, just of the highest quality. And again, it hasn't disappointed. I, I believe this is like the sixth or seventh Rexford to come in, in my collection. And currently I'm, I've only have three in an effort to kind of trim down the collection and going for more quality, rare knives. That included getting rid of some very plain Rexfords. And, and uh, I think this one is perfect. And I think Sako at Recon One knows exactly what I'm looking for. So he knew I'd jump all over it. Um, this one will stay in the collection. It is just a stunner. I think it represents Todd's work perfectly. It is absolutely perfect. Literally perfect, guys. Everything about this is perfect. The sound, the flipping action is just phenomenal. And I had to share it with you guys. I know you guys like those, those high-end knives, and uh, I don't think it gets any crazier than a Rexford. So... Um, there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Sorry about the video last week. I actually did record a video, and believe it or not, when I went to upload it, I took the video card out, put it in, the video was corrupt. So I talked to myself for about 12, 15 minutes, and I wasn't able to share it with you. So I'm going to re-record that video. Um, it was a, a full-size Marsh Vanquish. Um, I'll try to put it up next weekend for you. But um, I figured this was the piece. I was planning on doing this piece anyway this weekend, and... Uh, I didn't want to push this one aside for the marsh. This is absolutely stunning. Truly a truly stunning knife again. Thanks so much guys for watching. Um, I want to take a, a second like I do every, every video to thank everybody for supporting the channel, all the kind words, all the people that comment, participate in the comment section. You know, I try to uh, reply to every comment and sometimes it might take a week or two, but I will inevitably. And I don't care if you disagree with me or not, just comment. The conversation about the knives is half of the knife collecting, and I love that. So for those of you who do, I appreciate it. If you dug the video, throw me a like. Um, it lets me know that I'm going in the right direction. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I try to put out a video once a week, and um, I try to stick to it unless it's a holiday or I have a family obligation. But today, it's all about the Rex for Gamma. Here it is, guys. Hot hammered Sanmai Gamma. Oops, sorry. Hit the tripod. Hot hammered uh, Sanmai Gamma from the Solvang Knife Show uh, about two, three weeks ago. Um, appreciate you stopping in. Thanks so much, guys. See you on the next video. Take it easy.